This is Jason David Frank, and you're listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. Now, I look in the mirror. All I see is you. And I hate you even more. Hun, you don't understand. That's Shredder. Forget the Shredder. You're going to pay for what you've done to me. Some people just can't handle change. You are now on the inside of what I like to call the circle of trust. We are all connected in the great circle of life. You know something, Bert? I think you and I are going in circles. It feels like we're going in circles. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Because it's a circle. Yeah, we heard about the circle. Yes, we're yeah. familiar with shape. Hi, this is Chuck. This is Greg. And this is Dan. And we are Talking in Circles, brought to you by the GeekCast Radio Network, the podcast that's kid-tested and mother-approved. How are things out there for all you guys? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. I had a kind of a lazy weekend. I was doing some channel surfing and I saw a little bit of a Star Wars marathon on Spike TV and Oh, they have Star Wars. I didn't know they ever played Star Wars. Yeah, I think TV. it's the first they do time that, that all they've... the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the I... damn time. Yeah, they do. That um, and, uh, no, uh, another uh, ABC family does Harry Potter all the time. Yeah. yeah. And then, well, this one too, later that same night, actually, they were having a, a Rocky marathon in AMC, and uh, they do that all the time too. So that was pretty much my Sunday, just kind of <laughs> <laughs> watching some classics there. But nice. And once I heard about the podcast and that you really loved Rocky, so they decided to play it in AMC. <laughs> yeah. Greg, things going good with you? Uh, yeah. But I, I'm not, by the way, I am not kid tested. <laughs> I am nowhere near any kind of parental approved. True, true, true. The podcast, maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> Me specifically, no. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't think about how bad that sounds now after I did it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my week, it's been interesting. There's been a stomach bug going across my house. Uh, my wife got it on Saturday, and then I later got it. And it kind of like threw me off for the week. I just had the weirdest week ever. Uh, the one day I was making enchiladas, you know, the classic Italian dish, and, you know, get <laughs> it all prepared. Italian. Exactly. Got it all prepared, ready to put in the oven, preheat in the oven, and I was smelling something burning. I'm like, what's that burning? I thought, oh, okay, the chicken on too high because I'm, I'm putting it on the stove top. Like, oh, no, it's still burning. And then I'm like, what is it? I opened up the stove and realized there was a pizza box in there for some reason, strange reason that I put in there. <laughs> so that was literally like burnt on the bottom and... My entire uh, apartment smelled like burned pizza box for a good few days. <laughs> so it smelled Ouch. delicious. Yeah, yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> and then later in the week, Ouch, I, that sucks. I was off of work. For, actually, for one day, it gets a snow the other day because I was sick. And I came back and one of those random situations where I was walking down the hall and it's a really long hallway. And there was someone on the other side. And you know that awkwardness when it's a really long hallway and you're walking towards each other and it's just like taking forever and you don't know. Do you not look at the person? You know, so that, that's the <laughs> awkwardness to begin with. And then I noticed the person that had like a sticker or something on their head. And I was like, I knew the person, so I was going to make a joke about it. So I was laughing inside. So I was kind of laughing at, at the sticker and about to say a joke. And But then I stopped myself. And then because I got close enough and I realized it was Ash Wednesday. And <laughs> it was actually like the ash from Ash Wednesday on their forehead. So I luckily stopped myself before I said a joke. But the bad thing was, I was still laughing. So <laughs> this person just thinks I'm the insensitive prick who just was laughing at them because <laughs> they celebrated Ash Wednesday. And I'm like, no, I didn't. it was just like a, one of those awkward moments. And I didn't realize that until I, after I'd walked past them. I'm like, oh, now they think I'm a horrible person. So um, <laughs> Can I ask you guys a question. Yes. It's, it's supposed to be a cross that they're marking on the forehead, right? 
I don't know. I think so. Usually, I think, yeah. I think all the priests have freaking Hulk thumbs because it just looks like a giant blob in the middle of people's foreheads. At I, this think point. It, I think it's just like the ash. It, it breads. I don't know. I don't know. The... I, 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 I've like watching the news. They they show people getting it on. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a cross. On the, They're supposed to do a cross, but it always just looks like this humongous black blob in the middle of the forehead. Yeah, yeah, plus yeah. Your, your thumb kind of flattens out, too, and you push it on there, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but, well, they could use the side of the thumb. I think that would make it a little bit more defined. I think They, might, we'll have, say- they might have been hulking out. I don't know. <laughs> I think what we're... <laughs> What we've decided is they need some sort of like stamper or something like that <laughs> to make yeah. it a little bit more efficient and go back. I think I just offended a lot of people and I apologize. It was my well, they they did start in one church around here. They did a, a drive through. Um, really? <laughs> yes, I swear they, they people didn't even shut off their cars. They stayed in their cars and the the priest had the ashes there and just did the the mark as they were sitting in their cars. Super size me, baby. <laughs> I want a number four. That's a confession with a side of Ash Wednesday. <laughs> Their whole face is just Ash. <laughs> the super size option. Anyways, for those joining for the, us for the first time, hopefully it's not the last time or those return visitors, like I said. We are Talking in Circles, the podcast that's a little bit about everything. We start with a discussion of what we've been doing recently, and then we'll move into a special topic. And this week's special topic is a new game we're going to play called Sequel, Reboot, or Destroy. And what that is, is we'll be talking about, I'll be bringing up some infamous franchises or past shows or things like that. And we'll be deciding, well, what should we do with them? We're, we're in the climate of reboots and sequels. Are there actually good films out there or good TV shows that we should reboot or sequelize? Or should we simply leave them be? We'll be discussing that in our second segment. But before we get there, we'll be talking about what we've been doing recently. And Chuck, why don't you kick us off? Well, we kind of have a little bit of a knowledge of you've been watching Rocky and Star Wars. Anything else? (laughs) I did find something on YouTube, actually. I was on a little bit of a Ninja Turtles kick after last (laughs) week's episode of uh, Top 5 Cartoons. So I was kind of like rummaging around YouTube looking at some stuff, and um, I, I found this uh, this TV movie from 2009 called Turtles Forever. Have you guys ever seen this? No, I have not. Is is this the one with the girl turtle? No, it's not. Okay, okay. Then I haven't seen it, I don't think. This, actually, I think you guys would like this based on our discussion of the turtles last week. It's a really cool movie that kind of incorporates different versions of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's all like wrapped up into one plot. It, it's about an hour and twenty minutes long. It's a good sized little movie. You have like the modern two thousands turtles, and then you have your uh, original cartoon from like the late eighties, and you have them drawn and acting the same way in that kind of like that joking around, really light mood and stuff. And then, like, later on in the movie, you have the original comic book Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles who actually appear in black and white. And they're drawn the same way that they were in the original 1984 comic. And, uh, of course, you have your classic 90s, like Shredder and Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady and all that. And you have uh, some newer some newer villains, too. And the, the Shredder from the newer version is kind of the main baddie of the movie. It's a really fun movie. There's a lot of comedy tossed in there to keep the mood really light. The funny thing was, too, that from the 1987 Turtles cartoon, the the Turtles always kind of broke the fourth wall a lot, kind of like Deadpool does in the comic. And they kind of incorporate that into this movie. And the newer, the modern Turtles are like, you know, who are you talking to? Like, they're always like looking, you know. (laughs) It's this really funny, like, ongoing joke that they do. And it's funny because it kind of, like, this one bad guy's name is Hun, kind of at the end. I think, like, Raphael says something to the camera. And, like, he looks over, like, at the camera. He's like, who are you talking to? There is no one there. (laughs) (laughs) And they go back to fighting. It's just little funny stuff that they stick in there like that. But it's actually really uh, impressive how they tie all this into, like, one plot. I I won't give too much away, but... At one point, they're kind of explaining this idea of there being multiple dimensions and therefore multiple versions of the turtles. They have this one part where there's like this little cloud that's kind of like a viewer screen or whatever, and they're looking through all the dimensions. And they're kind of showing some still pictures, and you see tons of different versions of the Ninja Turtles throughout the years, like all the different 
like artist renditions and uh, different cartoon versions and stuff like that. And they're actually like still pictures. And if you look close, you see the turtles from the live action movie from the early 90s. And I got a huge kick out of that because they just have those big goofy smiles on their face. And it's something that I <laughs> really remember from that movie. And it's cool, too, that in the one main battle of the movie, you can actually see, if you look closely, there's cartoon versions of Toka and Razor, the two monsters from uh, the second Turtles movie. Okay, yeah, I remember those guys. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool little Easter egg that they tossed in there. You kind of have to, like, watch close. Like, you're, you'll miss it. But I paused it, and you could definitely see the resemblances. Like, the one uh, was supposed to be a mutated snapping turtle. And the other one, I think, was a, a wolf or something like that. Yeah, I think it was a wolf. Yeah. The funny thing at the end, too, like, they actually tied into the real world. Because if you watch, like, through the credits, they show Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird kind of drawing their comic panels. Oh, and wow. you hear, yeah, and you hear them talking like, "Oh man, I hope this comic really sells," you know. And like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Let's go get some pizza or something like that. <laughs> and apparently, it's. I mean, they're credited on IMDb. It's their actual voices. So, I mean, they don't show their faces or anything. But just thought that was really cool. And there's some. There's even some like quotes in there too. When they show the turtles from the original comic book, they have them like kind of narrating, and there's actual quotes from the 1984 comic. Where, you know, one of the turtles is like, I cut two of them on my way down. Donatello takes out a third with his staff and stuff like that. It's like the opening narration for the comic book, and they threw that into the movie. I thought that was a really cool touch. So how did you see this exactly? Or should I ask? Was this a, a secret version It was of it? just just surfing around YouTube. And actually, I think I read in one of the comments, someone was like, oh, you know, they made this movie called Turtles Forever. Uh, back in 2009, and I'm like thinking to myself, you know, I never heard of that. So, of course, I Googled it, and I found it, and luckily, the whole movie was on YouTube. So, oh, wow. I was able to check it out. Yeah, Nice, nice. Really fun movie. I think you guys would enjoy that. I will have to have to check that out. Have you been uh, up to anything else? I did get to see Son of God last night in the theater. It's about Jesus, um, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, this, okay, good. <laughs> of course, this is the movie of the life, the teachings, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ as told by the Gospel of John. This has um, become a very religious episode today, unexpectedly, about Ash Wednesday. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's in the spirit of uh, you know Ash Wednesday and the, the start of Lent. Uh, question. He didn't have any drive-through confessionals during that movie, did he? <laughs> No, no, this was... Uh, <laughs> Drive up on your donkey. <laughs> this this was a bit more traditional. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. I remember you talking about that, and that's like a, a continuation of that miniseries. Is that correct? For the one from History Channel? Yeah, somewhat. It's actually very similar to the History Channel one. They did change some stuff, but it was actually... F- the devil again? No, they didn't put him in. Oh, okay. Um, I know there was that whole controversy when <laughs> yeah. that came out, which was kind of ridiculous in and of itself. But um, this was filmed at the same time because everything was set up and they did change some stuff because the series on the History Channel covered a lot of stories from the Bible. This was primarily focused on Jesus and it was kind of ambitious to cover like so much of his life in one movie because they, they cover pretty much his whole adult life. It's kind of a tall task but i actually think they did a pretty great job on it they covered some major points the more well-known parts of the new testament resurrecting lazarus lazarus and uh stopping the the stoning of the woman accused of adultery and the famous quote there like let he was without sin cast the first stone they kind of changed the quote a little bit that they kind of updated the dialogue to make it more understandable with today's language kind of wasn't so much of that old English style of speaking, so... Wasn't like Passion of the Christ where it was all subtitled? Uh, no. No, not at all. Also, he, he healed the paralyzed man, you know, walking on the water when they're on the Sea of Galilee. Stuff like that. I think it was... It was very historically accurate from what I remember reading and stuff like that. And as we know, the Bible is one big history book, which has been proven multiple times. But, uh... I, I kind of found myself saying like some of the quotes like right with them and remembering a lot of stuff and kind of knowing what's you know what's about to happen and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Very very moving and powerful movie, especially at the crucifixion scene. 
I mean, I found myself getting very teary eyed. It's kind of hard not to, though, when when you're watching them do that to him. It's not as bloody and violent as the Passion of the Christ was. It's still pretty. It still is pretty, you know, intense. Yeah, it's it's, it's very intense just to kind of convey that message, but it's not quite to the extent of the Passions was. But you still get the same like same effect, in my opinion. I think this actor that plays Jesus, and I knew his name at one point, and I can't really pronounce it that well, but um, I think he did a great job. He he did a great job of coming across as very kind and gentle and sweet, which is what he should be, and that, you know, obviously love is the very essence of God, and I think he did, like, an awesome job of conveying, conveying this, just his facial expressions and uh, the way he speaks, the way he moved, and his hand gestures and speaking and everything like that. Really, really cool. I also think one of the underrated part of this movie was how they did a great job showing why all the Jewish priests felt so threatened by him. They went into a lot of that and like why, why they felt threatened by him and how they kind of collaborated with the Romans to have him arrested and removed from the city and stuff like that. I thought that was really interesting how they, covered that a lot interesting interesting yeah i have so would you say it's better than the actual tv series is it you think along the same lines i think it's along the same lines like i said very similar they did change some things but uh i would say all in all i enjoyed this more than passion of the christ and part of that is because this covers like his whole life and focusing of course on his teachings and his adult life whereas the passion was uh, pretty much a retelling of the final 12 hours of his life. So you get kind of more more of the whole story in this one. But uh, this this actually got some pretty good box office numbers. It exceeded the expectations uh, set by the critics. Who I think they were projecting around like $17 million or something for the weekend, and I think it pulled in about 26 Yeah, so it, the, only thing, the only thing that beat it was Liam Neeson. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <I mean, laughs> There aren't people that have the ability to bring in a bigger box office than Jesus. And, of course, it's Liam Neeson in a plane <laughs> fighting. He's, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it did pretty well. Uh, we were talking about it at MWR Weekly. It was, like, number two uh, this past weekend. So, And I'm sure it will, with with uh, Easter not that far away, it'll just continue to be a pretty pretty steady. I, 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 I'm pretty sure and certain that'll probably make over $100 million or so. Oh yeah, and they said that's like the average Christian movie makes like a hundred million. They said they traditionally do pretty well. But um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about with this was uh, kind of the modern day miracles, so to speak, uh, during the filming of this movie. And this is actually pretty interesting. I had heard this from someone I worked with, and I went and looked it up and uh, found that it was true. I guess there's a scene in the movie where Jesus tells uh, one of the Jewish priests, uh, Nicodemus, he says, the Holy Spirit is like the wind. And after he spoke that line on the set, they said at that exact moment, this huge like gust of wind came through and it lasted like 20 seconds. It was blowing stuff over, like tipping stuff over on the set. They said it sounded... It, felt like a, a 747 engine taken off like that just that wind gust like coming through it and they all kind of like stopped and like looked at each other like what just happened <laughs> i thought that was pretty interesting and then the one the next one that happened i thought was even even crazier during the production of this they had hired a, a snake a snake wrangler because this was filmed in morocco and he kind of would keep the set free of reptiles and snakes and different things. And on average, he would find about one or two snakes a day. But the crazy thing is, on the day they were filming the crucifixion scene, uh, he found 48 venomous snakes crawling around mm-hmm. the foot of the cross. <laughs> that is pretty, pretty crazy. So, I'm, I'm Indiana Jones in this case. I hate snakes. <laughs> That's what it kind of reminds you of, just, you know, that pit where they're all crawling. I'm like, geez, like 48 snakes, like, <laughs> around the base of the cross. I'm like, that. 
That is crazy. Like that's got to mean something. On a, on a completely different note, but uh, <laughs> staying with the whole snake angle, I was watching something online, and it was of a crocodile and like a python in, in Australia that were fighting against each other, and like a full size crocodile, and the python won, and then ate the crocodile. I'm like, I am forever scared of snakes and never going back to Australia again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. But then I also saw a, a thing on an otter, and it was attacking a crocodile too like a smaller one but a, a, a regular sized crocodile i don't know alligator i don't know whatever but uh it was eating it and like and hunting it but apparently like otters are like the apex predator of their natural habitats and even above that of like crocodiles which i'm like that's kind of crazy those i love uh, otters yeah and they're very very vicious and can kill crocodiles so that's kind of crazy but that just had me thinking of that anyways chuck sorry to cut you off do you have anything else I just wanted to add that uh, my girlfriend and I really enjoyed it. Uh, we thought it was very moving and uplifting. A lot of people actually found themselves kind of spiritually stirred by this movie and their faith strengthened and stuff after just seeing what Christ was willing to suffer through to redeem us and kind of pay our debt uh, with his life and stuff. And um, I would definitely recommend it. I think it's very, very well done for as much as they had to cover uh, in the movie. I think they did a great job of putting it together. The mm-hmm. note I left on your truck was just as impactful, I bet. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny story, too. I, we came out of the movie theater, and there's a, a note stuck to the handle of my truck, and it's from Greg, who was also at the movies seeing a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right. on, uh, did you have anything else you were watching, Greg, or Chuck? Um, no, that's, that's about all I've been up to, except the star wars and rocky marathons but i'm not going to get into them at this point <laughs> so greg we've heard that you're at the movie theater so what were you at the theater seeing i was at the theater seeing uh monument men okay so nearly as religious as son of god well kind of <laughs> they they had the whole thing with the uh oh, what was it the um oh the um they, they had a bunch of ex- religious artifacts like the madonna the, Bana, Bana, the Bruges Madonna and the um, panels for that one piece from the from another church, which I forget what that was at this point. It was. Uh, by, by the way, I went to art school and I love history. Art history together, terrible at. So as soon as I, <laughs> I like, thirty minutes after this movie, I forget all the names of all the pieces. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what did you think of the actual movie? Oh, I thought it was really good. If you're if you're going to see it thinking it's going to be an action movie, it doesn't really kind of hold that pace. There's some scenes with a little bit of action in it, but uh, they're few and far between. But I, I liked the uh, liked it anyway. Uh, had a great cast. It's got George Clooney, Bill Murray, John Goodman. Who else? I feel like I'm missing people. Uh, but the, Matt those, Damon. Uh, yeah, Matt Blanchard. Damon. Kate Blanchett, Blanchett, who just won an Oscar literally days ago. So, <laughs> but yeah, my my favorite of the the actors was uh, definitely Bill Murray. I think he's he was the Jesus Christ in this film, um, <laughs> the Jesus Christ of comedy. He just cracks me up no matter what he's in. It was a more serious role. There was very few um, comedic moments, but uh, he was definitely the best character in it, if you ask me. Did he ad lib any lines like he did in um, Caddyshack? <laughs> <laughs> he probably did who knows like it's the in the hole sitting down scene it was was pretty awesome but yeah i thought it was really good uh i think i, I liked it more because of the uh subject matter i do enjoy art art history not that much but uh, i do appreciate the cultural aspects of art and i i really enjoy history and i kind of I, I hate to say enjoy because it, it's a war and how can you enjoy a war because it's just disgusting. But I, I enjoy the the history of it. I, I don't know how to say this so it doesn't sound like I'm a giant prick going, I love this war where millions of people got murdered and terrible atrocities against the Jews and like... I mean, I think there's an interest there just in the in the amount that World War II has like really shaped our country afterwards when history channel actually had stuff that was history not just you know pawn stars actually everything was pretty much <laughs> world war ii my dad uh, loves like world war ii history there's something my about dad it does too yeah i mean i usually go to this thing called world war ii weekend and running pa every every year which is 
uh, which is interesting. This it's like cosplay. It's like Comic Con for history buffs. I guess way to, best way to put it. But I saw Monuments Men too. It's, it's, I, I did enjoy it. Like I think I kind of compare it to like the Dirty Dozen and it's it very like classical in that way. And I feel like it's a very a throwback film. I think my anticipation was really high. Uh, yeah, mine too. So I I don't think it really lived up to my anticipation, but I still at the end of the day did did like it. Yeah, and you know they added you definitely know they added scenes in there just to uh, heighten the intensity a little bit because they they definitely felt like this actually didn't happen this way for yeah. a couple of parts. Yeah, especially near the end where it's like a race against the Russians that uh, feels very artificially created just to add some sort of tension and yeah and the, the fact that they were looking for uh, how they were looking for one specific piece to yeah. really make them happy and exactly. and i i thought the the deaths that happened were kind of predictable for the most part yeah yeah it, it did struggle with that whole like comedic and serious aspect a little bit especially when it came to like the death of characters and there was a question in there regarding, like, you know, is it worth it to risk people's lives to save art? And I think it it didn't explore that question enough for me. I think it it, it knew the answer and didn't ever question the answer, which I think made it a lesser of a movie. But yeah, um, I love George Clooney as a director. I know you talked about, like, his movie way back when. His yeah, and I thought this one was much better than, than uh, the other one that I talked about. Have you seen uh, Good Night and Good Luck? No, I haven't. That I would highly, highly recommend. It's black and white. I think it's actually on Netflix. I could be wrong. <laughs> but that's my favorite film that he's made. Uh, I really love that movie. It's about Edward R. Murrow and his debates with Joe McCarthy during that era of like the Red Scare and stuff like that. But it's oh, that that part of history kind of drives me nuts with uh, McCarthy. It's yeah, it, it's which is that makes that a really good movie to watch. It's very critical of that time period. But uh can't think of the actor's name that plays Edward R. Murrow, but he's like spot on in that movie. It's it's really I I enjoyed it. Also, it's a, it's a gorgeous looking movie. It's, it's all black and white and looks pretty pretty fantastic. I think you'll just enjoy it on that aspect. Do enjoy black and white, but it's more photography than movies, <laughs> though. Well, it's very it's very photogenic. I would say you know it's yeah. the way it's shot. It's even though it's a movie, the way it's shot is very photogenic. Yeah, but uh. All right, you been up to anything else? I had a graphic novel that I read, uh, Identity Wars. It's another alternate dimension adventure continuing off of, I think it was last week's episode where I talked about Exiles and then New Exiles, I mean. And uh, before that, it was we talked about another dimension skipping thing. But uh, this one involved the Hulk, Spider-Man, and Deadpool. And it kind of, there was kind of three issues, and each issue kind of dealt with one of the characters. For Spider-Man, it was pretty much he met up with an alternate version of himself who is essentially so awesome that the world doesn't need any other heroes. But he gets hurt, and so the Peter Parker that we know and love kind of has to take over for him and finds out that a world without struggles is just kind of boring for the most part. Some other things happen to kind of spice it up a little bit for him. Um, I thought it was kind of predictable, but otherwise good. And then the the next one dealt with Bruce Banner. I'm sorry, the, the next one dealt with Deadpool, I'm sorry. And his alter, alternate version was Death Mask, who is a, a, essentially a Deadpool that becomes Doctor Doom. Interesting. Yeah. And then Victor Von Doom is a version that looks more like Deadpool. And Victor Von Doom and Deadpool kind of become friends. Doompool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, no, Chuck, I'm pretty sure they were naming these characters off of Clint Eastwood movies. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, one's I, the good, the bad and the ugly? Uh, it was no, it was Deadpool, and I think I think Death Mask was a Clint Eastwood movie. But then Victor Von Doom's alias, which I forget at this point, was another like Million another, Dollar Baby. No, no, I forget the name. <laughs> it, it was Dirty old, Harry. It, it was it was a seventies movie, it, and it was part of the Dirty Harry franchise, I believe. But uh, but but anyway, Death Mask kills. Victor Von Doom and Deadpool is very pissed off because Victor Von Doom and Deadpool are becoming fast friends and gets pissed off. And uh, 
I thought this one was a little bit more interesting than the the Spider-Man comic, but then the last one dealt with Bruce Banner, and Bruce Banner's alternate version became uh, the Sorcerer Supreme who banished his Hulk to hell, making him the Infernal Hulk. Interesting. Yeah, and for being stuck down in hell for as long as he was, he kind of became orange instead of green, and he has giant ass horns. And since uh, that, kind of sounds uh, like the ultimate Green Goblin a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) And then, so since that enchantment was going on, it essentially made it so Bruce Banner couldn't turn into Hulk because his Hulk got sent to hell as soon as they transferred over into this dimension because of the enchantment but yeah they they eventually uh, send the infernal hulk back and it gets wrapped up nicely in a bow it wasn't the greatest thing in the world but uh it was one of those ones that i picked up at bam for really cheap so i actually almost picked that up today too i was uh, at books a million looking through i didn't pick that up i ended up picking up winter soldier graphic novel but I it was saw... probably a better choice yeah. <laughs> to be <Yeah>. quite honest <laughs> So I know I, I'm a little hesitant to pick up pick up something when I when it's in wrapping and I can't look at it. I think I are a huge deal. So yeah, I but I like it when they're in the plastic because they're nice and nobody's touched it and it's nice and crisp and that's true. That's true. So I if you could find one with it with an open that you could page through and then you could just buy the one that's wrapped in the plastic, I think that's your uh, best situation going on there. Just rip one of them open. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know. It wasn't me. Yeah, it just broke. <laughs> I don't know. You see that a lot, actually, at stores. And you see the plastic smashed into a corner somewhere. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anything else from you? I have something else that I watched. I think it was actually mentioned. I'm not sure if it was in last week's or the weeks before. And I forget who watched it. But I also watched uh, Justice League War. I did. I saw that. Okay. And I, I I believe you didn't care for it too much. Am I correct? Everybody seemed like an asshole. Yeah, that was an issue. And I just, I didn't like what they did the to Doomsday. Dark side. Dark side. Yeah, there you go. That's the guy. Like you said, just I, I felt like a lot of the characters felt like big jerks, like Green Lantern and Superman. Yeah, Green Lantern, I think, was just kind of cocky for the most part. And I think Superman was supposed to be the same thing. It did make me, I, I did like Superman just a touch more in this <laughs> than I, I normally do comments below um <laughs> uh so i did like him a little bit better uh, but i i thought it was actually really good i kind of felt like they dumbed down a lot of the characters but then batman was kind of upped to like godlike status or he's gotten uh telepathy for somehow with all of his knowledge, but the rest of them just seemed like they just kind of wanted to Hulk smash everything for the most part. thought it was a pretty decent movie, to be quite honest. I'm, I'm not that into the DC lore, so I, I can't really... Um, I don't think I've actually read anything, really, with uh, Darkseid. The only reason, the only way I know about him is from the other Justice League animated stuff is the only way I know anything about Darkseid, so... Yeah, I'm that doesn't the, affect me too much. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. Like I haven't read it, but like I like in the Justice League cartoon, like he had a personality. There was something to him, and and that he felt more like a Galactus character, just like a force of nature that was just yeah. trying to destroy. Which I don't know. I guess it it took away everything I liked about that character. So that's what what kind of bugged me. Fun it, fact about uh, the Justice League cartoon Dark Side: he was voiced by Michael Ironside. Who was, uh, of course, Jester in Top Gun? So, <laughs> <laughs> random fact of the day, just inserted <laughs> right in there. <laughs> but my favorite character in there, I think, and I'm not going to come up with his name right now. Cyborg. Uh, Cyborg. Thank you. I li- I like how you actually knew. I didn't say it all. I did not give any hints, but you instantly knew it was Cyborg. <laughs> I th- I don't think he uh, really got that much play in dc comics because i haven't really read anything with him in it the most you saw him was in the teen titans animated stuff on tv i thought his kind of origin for this was kind of interesting i'm not i don't know his his original origin but i i thought his origin was kind of interesting and i thought he was one of the better characters of course, love Batman, but there wasn't a lot of Batman in there to begin with. So, what did you, what did you think the vo- of the voice casting of Batman? 
I forgot about it until now, but I remember going, I don't know, the voice. I, I think that's like the Ben Affleck of Batman voices. <laughs> Yeah, it, it felt very <laughs> very monotone with little emotion. It didn't have. Yeah, it, and he didn't scare me at all. I think uh, I believe there was one part where he tried to threaten somebody, and I'm like, that doesn't scare anybody at all. And I feel like that's how Ben Affleck is going to be in the, in the movie, because Ben Affleck seriously does not scare me at all. It's going to be like the bad man on uh, college humor videos. <laughs> <laughs> About as scary as that. But yeah, I thought it was pretty decent, and I I thought it was a. Uh, pretty good pickup because i went to best buy and i picked up thor uh, dark worlds and uh i saw this alongside it so i grabbed it real quick and uh it, w- it was a good last minute decision on my part i think <laughs> or are you just trying to justify the purchase mm. no i thought it was a- <laughs> i'm just joking what <laughs> would you like with the other have you seen the other justice league movies like new frontier apocalypse and like uh, justice league doom i probably did <laughs> <laughs> i know your memory's not very good Whatever ones are on Netflix, I've probably seen, but I seriously don't remember at this point. Mm -hmm. Hashtag shitty memory. (laughs) That's all I've been up to for the most part. Before I get to the the thing, I know the one thing that we've all watched. Last two Saturdays, I went to something called AMC, did what's called the Best Picture Showcase. That's uh, two weeks where they show all the films that have been nominated for Best Picture. We go go to four on one day and five on another, and I went with a guy... From work, we've been going since 2010-ish or so. So that's, I mean... Are you cheating on us again? (laughs) Shh. With Um, your Baltimore friends. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But it's it's a fun time. It's Literally, it's all day at the movies. And the unfortunate thing is, like, last year, a group of older ladies sat behind us, and they were super annoying. And then (laughs) this year... (laughs) And not that old. I'd say, like, (laughs) 40-ish, 50-ish. This year... They ended up sitting behind us again for both days, and it was a little the bit... The same exact ladies? The same exact ladies. It's <laughs> inter- not even possible. It's, Holy crap. I know. It's it's in- What's interesting is, like, you start recognizing people, because the same people seem to go each year. So it's like, oh, I, like, you, like there's a good amount of people that I, I recognize. Odd. It's like some random summer camp or something. Um, <laughs> I thought, like, this year for the Best Picture nominees... It's actually a really good year. A large variety of movies. Obviously, 12 Years a Slave won, and, which is a movie I would say is highly recommend to pretty much anyone. My favorite film last year was Her. In the theater, I was the only one that liked it. Like Everyone else hated that movie. It's a hard film to quantify for sure. So a lot of people, pretty much everyone was talking about how much they hated it. And I'm like, I really love that movie. That was tough. Also, Nebraska is one of my favorite films. That I would recommend pretty much to anyone. It's just a, It's a really funny film. That I think overall probably got the most laughs from people. Also seeing Gravity again on the big screen, which is pretty phenomenal. I don't know if you've guys seen any of those at all. Or Gravity was excellent. I apparently have bad taste in uh, movies because I think I've only seen uh, one of the pictures that has that was nominated for uh, Best Picture. <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, and I I think it. it Pretty much every year, I maybe see like one of the movies that are nominated for Best Picture. I apparently I don't have that uh, great taste in uh, uh, movies. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of the same way. Like usually, the ones that are nominated are actually like not in line with my taste. They're usually the ones I don't. Yeah. Like. I did see Gravity, and I actually do really want to see Twelve Years a Slave. I haven't seen that yet, but depends. Like every year, it's a little bit different. I watched like every movie, so I actually saw all of them already, be- except for Fil- uh, Philomena before I started doing it. So I was watching every one ex- pretty much for the second time, sometimes third time. I would say like out of the ones, knowing your guys' taste, the ones I think you would enjoy, Captain Phillips for sure. That's like a thriller. That's not something you would like associate with like a snooty best picture film. Plus Tom Hanks. Plus Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is brilliant in that. I love Tom Hanks. I still have to see Saving Mr. Banks. I really wanted to see that, but I... I didn't have anybody that would go to theater with me i don't think they need to have some sort of bullet train to baltimore because or something because actually that's the same thing that happened but uh i tend to go to movies by myself i'm not gonna lie it happens Uh, yeah i'm so socially inept that i i I feel weird going to a movie by myself i actually this this year has been the first year where i actually went to a movie by myself and i felt completely awkward the entire time (laughs) What happens with me during December and January, you know, December and November, like I have a lot of PTO that I have to use up. So my wife's Carol's working. I'm home during the week. 
So I'm like, I'm just going to go to the movies and watch stuff that she has no desire in watching. And uh, I guess I can make an excuse because I'm like, it's for the podcast or so I can do a review. So I don't feel bad about it. But if you go during the day, which I can't do often, it's pretty much I can't either. <laughs> it's pretty much everyone in there is alone. So I'm assuming everyone else also is doing a podcast or a movie reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I learned last night going to Monuments Men with my mom that uh, that Wednesday night is actually a pretty decent night to go to the movies because there was only like eight other people there. Yeah, yeah. And and one of those was Chuck. So. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a different theater, though. There was a decent amount in ours. I was kind of surprised. Yeah. But yeah, I was thinking what other ones you guys would maybe like. American Hustle is pretty, pretty good. I would just see that for Jennifer Lawrence, to be quite honest. And Amy Adams, I'm I'm a fan of Amy Adams. So going more off of the looks type of. That's, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Like, uh, <laughs> well, after that movie, the one comment my wife had was, uh, Carol had was basically, why doesn't Amy Adams own a bra? Because <laughs> she doesn't wear one for the entire movie. Uh, she can get away with it, Carol. That's why. <laughs> Evil glare through through the laptop. <laughs> Anyways, the one thing we've all watched that I want to talk about was I also watched the Thor. We watched Thor on Blu-ray, and within that Blu-ray is a one of the classic or one of the staples for Marvel recently has been doing the one shot, and it was the one shot All Hail the King. And for those that have not seen Iron Man three yet, a little bit of a spoiler here, so I would say skip ahead maybe five ten minutes or so. Uh, but basically, it's a, a story about the Mandarin or you know, the character that was training the Mandarin. And I, I know you guys all saw, saw it as well. So I'm curious to hear what you guys thought of it. Greg, what did you think? I thought it was good. I, I felt like the beginning of it was kind of pointless after you discover kind of what happens. Am I doing spoilers on this? Because I, I know you said uh, for them to skip about five or ten minutes ahead. But uh... I would say, yeah, I would say do spoilers because, if, like I said, if you haven't seen it, skip ahead. But it's it's a one shot. It's not like it's really revealing whole yeah, lot but yeah okay. i felt like the beginning of it was kind of pointless since uh, like the guy setting up that he's a reporter there to interview the mandarin and all this i i thought all that was kind of pointless since he is a, a member of the 10 rings like I felt like there was no point behind that at it was kind all. of a, kind of like a red herring really yeah uh, but the only the only thing that I, I really really enjoyed about it was the appearance of sam rockwell i thought those parts were <laughs> hilarious they didn't really lead to anything but i i thought it was funny and i did enjoy the, the fact that it set up that there is an actual mandarin out there somewhere so i i thought that was really great definitely the, the first half of it i wasn't too keen on after learning uh, what the situation was, but I, I enjoyed the what the end of it is going to lead up to, and I enjoyed Sam Rockwell's performance with pants on. <laughs> Chuck, what did you think? Um, I liked it a lot. I thought it was very funny overall. I, I agree with Greg. I, I did like the the Justin Hammer appearance there at the end in the credits and. My favorite line was when he said uh, it was something to the effect of, uh, you know, what's so great about this guy anyway? He looks like Bin Laden and Benny Hill had a kid. (laughs) 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 I thought that was hilarious because it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of fitting. But, um, Sam Rockwell is just the way he just puts things out. Everything he could, he could say anything funny for the most part. Yeah. Like Greg said, it's really cool that they said there's like a real Mandarin out there. And I kind of started hearing rumblings and maybe started speculating this myself. But, you know, could he possibly uh, appear on the Shield Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show, maybe? Because they're kind of hinting at this guy that's behind the works of everything. Not sure if it would be him, but that could be cool if they go that route. There was a ton of Easter eggs in this as far as like comic references and stuff. I'm not sure if you guys like found these or from stepping on anyone's toes here, but um, I know like the the name that they used for the interviewer, the Ten Rings guy, Jackson Norris. That's actually a Marvel character. He, he was a guy that had become a a Shield agent. He was also the character of Nighthawk for a while. He had his mind transferred into the body of the real Nighthawk or whatever it was, but. I thought that was kind of interesting that they chose that name. And uh, the guy in the prison that asks uh, Trevor Slattery to 
to do the Mandarin voice, if you remember that guy. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. me, me and the boys were wondering if he could do the voice. His name was Fletcher. <laughs> His name was uh, Fletcher Heggs. And he was actually the character of the knight in uh, Marvel Comics. He was one of Obadiah Stane's chessmen. And actually, I mean, I couldn't see it on my screen. I don't even know if you could see it on a, a big TV or anything, but... Uh, apparently he has like a small tattoo under his eye and it's like a little chess piece or something. Well, I did not notice that at all. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it's noticeable, but I think it's just one of those little trivia things or whatever. Chuck went all Bruce Wayne up on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I checked the bad computer and it had like all this marble. <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> Alfred. Well, he's prepared for everything, so yeah. Maybe in another cool- dimension. Yeah, the the coolest one... Though actually, I thought it was uh, that the name of the prison was Seagate Prison. You guys are really going to bust me about this now, but this first appeared in 1972, and this was the jail or the prison that uh, Luke Cage was being held in. Wow! So people are saying like, okay, they kind of hinting at Luke Cage, you know, because he's got a Netflix series coming out now. And then of course the they're not the going to Ben Kingsley appear on a Netflix uh, TV movie, whatever. Maybe not. Well, I mean. Is. Maybe not him, but it's just a, maybe a way of like tying it in because they might mention it on the Luke Cage show that like oh he spent time in Seagate Prison or whatever. You yeah. never you never know. I mean Kevin Spacey's on House of Cards and that's on Netflix. So true, true. And and plus the the four Netflix series they're saying that they may culminate in kind of this uh, Defenders miniseries. And you know this Nighthawk character was in Defenders for a little while, so I don't know if that's. I mean, not necessarily that they're going to tie these things in together directly, but it might just be, you know, Marvel tosses stuff in like little, you know, foreshadowing or kind of little hints of what to expect, you know, down the road or something like that. But pretty cool stuff. Do you have like a giant cork board in your room with like, <laughs> like do you... thread? I have, yeah, I have red yarn tying everything together. <laughs> in the middle is the Infinity Gauntlet, and you're trying to <laughs> tie all this stuff together. He's working his way there. Yeah, yeah, it's my little fake Infinity Gauntlet. I have like little uh, uh, colored jewels from the craft store that I glued on there. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's pretty much it for us. Well, we didn't get your opinion, Dan. Come oh, on. Oh yeah, I didn't get my opinion. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, oh, so what I thought about it, I was kind of along the same lines as you, Greg. I mean, I I thought it was fine. Like these one shots, they're not. I haven't yeah. watched them all, but I haven't been. Like, some of them have been okay. I, I like the Agent Coulson one, which was basically him at a gas station beating up a few people, which was fine. I like the the one with Agent Carter. I thought that one was really good. I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, and they they said that that's kind of she's going to get a TV show, or that's in the realm of possibilities. And I if if they set it up like this one i uh, like that one i thought it would be really good i mean i, I thought it was fun I, I do like ben kingsley in that role i do think he's a lot of fun so it's cool seeing that again and knowing all, all those easter eggs makes it a little bit better it did feel feel like just a big tease in, in a good way i guess teasing can be fun <laughs> it can be it has me wondering though if they are teasing to the mandarin i don't think they're gonna do another iron man movie so I, you just made a whole bunch of people sad dan <laughs> I think it's kind of what writing on the wall, though. I mean, I think we'll get Iron Man and the, uh, you know, in the Avengers, but I don't think we'll get another standalone Iron Man movie. I find that I find it very doubtful, just because Robert Downey Jr.'s contract is so much at this point. But Iron Man three didn't make boat loads of cash, so who knows? But I thought it was okay. It was fun. It didn't really. It was just kind of like a day in the life type of thing with a little bit of a twist at the end uh, that I honestly didn't really see coming. I thought it. Didn't expect it to go that way, but uh, I think, like you said, Greg, with the thing in the beginning, it kind of threw me off. I think it was just there to throw you off, so yeah, uh, which kind of makes it it's kind of a little like a cheap trick in a way. But I, I would for a bonus on a Blu-ray, I think it's fine. So, but anyways, I would recommend checking that out and seeing it for yourself. And now I maybe watch it again with all of Chuck's notes and seeing if I can spot them myself. So, and start my own little board on my wall. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break here, and when we come back, we have a fun game to play. A new game for us called Sequel, Reboot, or Destroy. So we will see you in a bit. 2012 marks the 30th anniversary for Masters of the Universe. We here at the GCRN are celebrating with a brand new series of podcasts. The Powers of Grayskull series will cover every episode of every MOTU cartoon. Yes, even that crappy new adventure stuff. 
Join Optimus Solo and TF2 and Mike as they tell tales of Eternia, discover the myths of Etheria, become masters in space, and finally masters of Grayskull. You can find the Pogs podcasts in iTunes and the web at www.geekcastradio.com. Good journey! All right, and welcome back. And today, like I mentioned, we have a special game, a new game. You know, starting new ideas here. That's what we do at Talking in Circles. And this game is called Sequel, Reboot, or Destroy. As I mentioned, we are in the land of remakes, reboots, franchises, all that stuff. So I'll be bringing out some current franchises, some franchises of the past, or some things of the past, and asking if we should make a sequel of it. Is there a sequel worthy uh, out there that should be made? Should we reboot it for a new generation, or should we leave it be? Should we destroy the idea and, you know... Exterminate! Exterminate! (laughs) Murder, (laughs) death, kill. Reference, check. (laughs) For those drinking at home, (laughs) you can take a shot. I am very drunk right now. (laughs) That's basically the game, and hopefully, hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun with this, and I'm going to start with one, probably the most recent one on here. One that's been around for a long time, since 1988, but it's still going. But I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. It is about the infamous Die Hard. Should we make a sequel? Another sequel? Should we reboot it? Another another sequel. (laughs) Or should we destroy it and finally say enough is enough with Die Hard? What do you guys think? Exterminate! exterminate i th- i think it's kind of run its course at this this point to be quite honest i think we should just kind of leave what we have and, and kind of i i didn't see the last one but Don't. so i'm not sure if we're gonna leave it at a high point but i i'd say leave it at a high point we've already got some great stuff that we can replay 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 I'd say wait till at least my generation is dead before they try and reboot it again. (laughs) Chuck, what do you think? I would also have to say destroy. I think it's, like Greg said, kind of hit the nail on the head there. It's kind of run his courts. I mean, how many has there been? Four, I think? Five. Oh, Oh, there's been five. Okay. Well, I ignored the last one, like you said. You should. It is awful. (laughs) It is the worst thing ever. It is like, I'm trying to not be offensive here, but yeah, it is like, you're going to be more offensive during this than you were during the religious talk. <laughs> true, true. I had a joke there, but I'm going to save it and not be a horrible person. So <laughs> I, just the last one literally was the worst movie of last year. I'll say that much. Like the, It was such a disappointment and so pointless and stupid. I really enjoyed one and two. You know, I think everybody did. Those are classics, but I mean, I kind of fell off after that. And I definitely haven't seen like the recent one or anything like that, so... I would say Die Hard with a Vengeance is very good. And then after that, and I actually even like Live, Live Free and Die Hard, but uh, I, I, I am in agreement with you guys. Destroy it. We don't we don't need another one. We don't need someone else taking up that mantle. It's done. Let's let's move on to other things. Uh, yes, Bruce Willis. Yes, you need to stop. Just stop it. Stop <laughs> it now. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> so I, I will say keep an open mind because I know you, you might think, there's no way you can do a sequel with some of these, but you never know. And uh, this is kind of in the vein of, of the the spinoff of Girl Meets World, which is that sequel kind of, of Boy Meets World that they're doing. So I kind of thought of, well, what else could you do that with? What else could we, what other classic TV show from the 90s could we take and do a new spin on it with characters that are older? And the first show that came to mind, my mind was Saved by the Bell. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> so should we reboot this franchise with new cast and new characters, sequelize it so Screech can finally get another job, or destroy it and leave it be? I guess since we started with Greg last time, Chuck, what, what are your thoughts? This, <laughs> When you were like bringing this whole thing in, that was the first thing that came to my mind, too, <laughs> Saved by the Bell. <laughs> I, I, would, I would vote a uh, reboot on this. I think... Um, I wouldn't destroy it because I think it was a lot of fun back in the day. And I think if it was done right, it could be a lot of fun again. I wouldn't do a sequel because I think a lot of those actors are really kind of, I don't, I don't want to say washed up, but they're kind of like come and gone. They've Old moved parts. on to different, different parts in their career. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think bringing them back would uh, make it too appealing, but I think if they rebooted it with some 
funny younger actors and you know use did some today today's comedy like not necessarily make it too dirty but just like i don't know something fresh something fun i think it, i think it could be really cool and really fun greg what about you what about you what are your thoughts i think i'm gonna get a ton of shit for this but uh I never really watched them, so we need a fourth option of I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> that would be the destroy option. I think I think that encompasses all that. Does it? If if we don't care about something, we just destroy it. We're straight <laughs> off Galactus on this. That's what we do in America. <laughs> you're American, Greg. That's what you're supposed to do. If you I don't care about it, then you blow it up. That's what oh. it is. A murder, death, kill from uh, Demolition Man. <laughs> I still haven't figured out seashells yet, so um, <laughs> it's about it's so about CC, scooping. It's it's scooping. Saved it. by the Bell is my three uh, three seashells situation. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of shitty. Uh, actually, I've I've seen like an episode or two. Uh, I I seriously just don't care about it. I never invested that much of my thought process or my time into it so i i i really don't care i don't even know how to answer you dan i'm sorry <laughs> that's all right well you did you said you don't care so that's exactly the answer. <laughs> yeah but there was three options to begin with it's how this game is played i'm just fracturing well, the game we'll go with e or sorry d none of the above okay cool all right well this is one. I don't know if you're going to care about it anymore, but I'm pretty sure you saw it because I think it's impossible not to see one of these just by walking. You, they were everywhere for a very long time and still seemingly not going away. And that is the franchise of Pirates of the Caribbean, the Johnny Depp classic, I guess. I don't know. We have four films already and possibly a fifth on the way. So do you think it is time to maybe reboot this franchise do we want that sequel that's on the way or should we destroy it and move on to other things? Uh, Greg, have you also not watched Pirates of the Caribbean? I didn't see the last one. Either have I, so don't worry. <laughs> is Johnny Depp going to be in this one? He is supposed to be because, you know, it's what is he does. Or- is, is Orlando Bloom supposed to be in this one? He is not. I do not believe. I think it's supposed to be, uh, like, again, like a new cast. I, I don't know. Is, is Karen Knightley supposed to be in this one? That I don't know. I don't believe so either. Uh, I like the stories. I liked the amusement park ride. So I, I'd say reboot it. To be uh, Reboot it. Okay. Karen Knightley was at least there. Something good to look at. When Johnny Depp first started it, we weren't tired of him yet. So that was awesome. And his take on it was interesting. And Orlando Bloom is always fun. So since we're missing two out of those three, and the third option is kind of getting stale at this point, I say find um, some other people, because I, I still think pirates are fun, and we don't get enough pirate stuff this day and age. I think there's some channel is, is going off on a pirate TV show, and I forget what... what uh, stars. Of, stars, and yeah. I don't have stars, so... Yeah, I do not. I, I've always liked pirate stuff. I, that's another part in, a part of history that I, I kind of enjoyed. So I'd like to see more pirate stuff. So, so uh, reboot that shit. <laughs> uh, Chuck, how about you? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with Greg a little bit here, but um, I have seen way too many pirates. I have a guy at work that dresses up on National Pirate Day in September. And Wait, he, hold on. He goes. There's, there's a lot of thing in that sentence I need to <laughs> need to understand. First, there's a National Pirate Day. <laughs> and second, a guy dresses up as a pirate. I thought you guys knew about this, man. This is huge. <laughs> Not, but no. I mean, I guess you go to Krispy Kreme and you get uh, free donuts if you're dressed up like a pirate. Why are you dissing that? Krispy Kreme donuts are awesome. Well, yeah, Please but sponsor us, Krispy Kreme. <laughs> I'm not dressing up like a pirate for some donuts. <laughs> you know what tastes really great with Krispy Kreme? Yingling Lager. Mm. It's been a while since we mentioned Tonight that. Tonight was a moonshine <laughs> night. Uh, tonight was moonshine. And nice you can blood. do that while watching Netflix because that's another thing we always mention. So <laughs> bringing it all together. And so Arrow was so really good last night. So. For, spo- uh, for uh, sponsorship. Yeah. Arrow, Arrow is on Netflix. So there you go. <laughs> I. Uh, Conversely, I've seen uh, too many pirates for for my taste. I say destroy this because um, I saw the first two. I actually liked those quite a bit, but I didn't see the other ones. And 
I'm just kind of sick of it at this point, and I think it's way too soon to reboot it, since I think the it was way too soon to reboot Spider-Man, and I think this is even less time. Isn't so, it sad that I thought Spider-Man is the same time as you did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of the go-to example. Like It was only 10 years after they rebooted it. This has got to be around there, if not less. I felt but like it was way shorter amount of time that they rebooted it in. <laughs> It was ten years since the first movie, but only like four years since like Spider Man three to right. Amazing Spider Man. So, or they should reboot it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was waiting for a pirate pun. Thank you, Greg. I was looking <laughs> no for no problem. One. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> I'm I w- here to provide. You know what? I would say give it one more shot with another sequel because Johnny Depp needs another boat, and then we can call it a day and we can stop it. Or maybe he could just do it just to keep him from doing any more like Lone Ranger movies or something. <laughs> true, true. I'd rather Stop get another doing the Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, there you go. It's it's we're we're really doing it for our own good, Johnny Depp. <laughs> do that. All right. So, going from some Greg that you had no interest in into one I'm pretty sure you had a good amount of interest in based upon last podcast and classic cartoon and we talked about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and how that kind of got a reboot treatment. And we've had sequels of cartoons here and there. Well, a classic cartoon in that of DuckTales. Woo-hoo. I was going to have to pa- I was waiting for that. So I had to do the the, the pause. <laughs> Should we? I didn't mess it up with uh, uh, Tailspin this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we sequelize this? Should we get the voice actors from the last, uh, if they're still alive from the last show and, and continue it? Do a reboot, a, a new design of DuckTales, maybe for this new age? Or should we just keep DuckTales in our memories and watch the old ones? Chuck, what do you think? I don't know. I, I guess maybe it's because I'm older now and I don't know if I'm being a curmudgeon here, but uh, <laughs> I, I say we just kind of leave it, in, leave it in the memory banks for now. I mean... I think it could be cool if they reboot another one. I personally wouldn't be interested in in watching it really. I guess I'd just kind of leave it, you know, in the in the childhood memory bank and just enjoy it that way. Greg, what do you think? I'm going to be out of character on this one and be I, I know people don't really know me for this on the at the podcast, but I'm a really big pessimist, so I'm going to go out of character and be really optimistic and uh, I think they should give it a, a reboot. Give a, this upcoming generation a uh, chance to see and uh, a more modern take on uh, DuckTales. I, I don't know how they would do that since uh, I believe they killed off Scrooge McDuck. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I don't know how I got to it, but I'm pretty sure I was like plinking through on uh, Wikipedia and I found that uh, Scrooge McDuck is actually dead. Did he choke on a gold coin or something? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was gargling with it. He was he was diving into it and uh, gargling the gold coins as he was swimming through them. His neck. Or, you know, is... he, or, or he broke his neck when he dove into the gold. <laughs> you know, the laws of physics say that a big pile of gold doesn't react like a liquid when you dive into it. <laughs> that or his nephews killed him for the inheritance. And then... <laughs> But then we can do a sequel called DuckTales CSI. That's a totally awesome book, by the way, Dan. I, I would totally read that. <laughs> the That's murder mystery. Like more modern take. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> murder mystery DuckTales. That would be pretty sweet. I would totally watch that. That would be. Put it on the ID channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, a, um, that's a robot chicken sketch waiting to happen. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'd reboot it. If you're not interested in seeing you don't have to watch it. But I, I think it would be um, something great for the, the kids out there. And I will say, I would love to see a sequel of it. I would love to, if they can, get the voice actors from the past. And maybe do, even if it's just a movie. They recently just did the an HD remaster of the classic game. And they got a lot of the voice actors for that back again. And I, to me, continue that and do a sequel. Maybe if it's just a movie or something like that. I just You can introduce the DuckTales, like you said, Greg, to an entire new generation. And bring back that, that the classic line of the disney tv shows and just to hear that theme song again i mean it's worth it right greg Hello. thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be my ringtone now every time greg calls <laughs> all right let's bring this on to another topic and chuck i don't think you're gonna be super interested in this one chuck so if you don't have a response that's fine but i know greg you're we talked about it you're a big fan of this franchise and i know you're not a big fan of the person who's currently taking the reins of this franchise and that is uh, daniel craig as james bond so, would you, I mean, James Bond is probably the, the franchise of franchises, 
Would you like to see another sequel with Daniel Craig? Would you like to see them reboot it? Or I'm doubting this is the answer. Would you like to see them stop making Bond movies? I'd like them to like maybe give a little bit of uh, time in between. But uh, I'd like to see uh, another reboot, I guess. Or if they want to continue it kind of like they did back in the day where they kind of went Sean Connery. Then all of a sudden it was Roger Moore with kind of no like skip a beat kind of thing. If if they want to do that, that's fine also. But uh, I'm not a huge Daniel Craig fan. I always thought James Bond was kind of a, a handsome man and uh, Daniel Craig's face uh, does not scream a uh, handsome man to me. So, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> totally viable option. Um, Sorry, I had to stick that in there. No, no, no. Uh, That's what I, he said. I, I, I don't um, think Ryan Reynolds would fit that part at all. Um, no. If, if they want to continue it, I'd say they'd have to change their lead actor actor, or if they want to go the reboot way. Do you, I, I just I just don't want to see Daniel Craig. I guess <laughs> my, I did I did enjoy the the last one. I didn't see the the second one with uh, Daniel Craig in it, but uh, I did himself. enjoy the third one because that was kind of more hinting at uh, a more vintage uh, James Bond. Chuck, did you have a response? I know you're not. I don't know if you saw any of the Bond films at all. Or... No, I've actually never really seen any, but my dun, first dun, dun, dun. Instinct, I'm not going to go with my first instinct here. My first instinct was just destroy this thing. You know, I'm sick of Bond movies. I, I've never really watched them, so it's I know it's kind of hard for me to say that, but I was just never interested in them. But I think I'm going to go the other way on this. I'm going to say if they wait a while, I think it would be okay to do a, a reboot on this because... I think it's cool to just look at uh, how technology advances in our society. E- even not watching any James Bond, I know James Bond is mostly about gadgets and cool stuff. Chuck um, just wants aw- to awesome. see Q. That's, that's, <laughs> you just want to see Q, don't you, Chuck? You want a spinoff. That's the fourth option is spinoff. <laughs> that should yeah. be another. It's going to be starring me. You know, it's just gonna... <laughs> I'm going to have all the gadgets and my little crazy yarn wall with the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> I, I think it would be cool, you know, maybe 10 years from now or 15 years from now. Like, who knows what tech we're going to have by then. And I think it would be cool to just have a movie that reflects that, you know, and have them using these cool gadgets and even... Sharks um, with laser beams attached to the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and not so much the tech that we will have 15 years from now, but whenever tech comes out, it always inspires people to have even new, newer ideas and even crazier ideas. So I think that movie in the future would be actually pretty cool for uh, people to see. So very nice. I know we, I went to one that specifically I knew Greg would like, and I think I'll go to one. I I think you're very me specific tonight, Dan. I'm always you specific, Greg. Uh, (laughs) You must've been uh, thinking about me a lot in the shower recently. That's what I do. That's why it took me so long (laughs) to get here. (laughs) Anyways, no, this one's very truck specific. Because we talked about your favorite films, and I know this was in there, so I'm curious, Chuck. And there's actually word on the street that they might continue this franchise with a, a new spin on it, and mm-hmm. that is Rocky. How would you Rocky. feel about a sequel? A He's reboot? the best around. <laughs> None's ever gonna keep him down. He's the best around. Of so all the Rocky I, songs, that's the one you go to? <laughs> it was the only yeah. one I thought of in short notice. I don't know why. <laughs> Just thinking more like, uh, you know, Eye of the Tiger or something like that. <laughs> I, I thought my my, voc- my voice was more suited for that song as opposed to uh, Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> it works. It works. Yeah. It was more yeah, high but... pitchy. I got more of a girly shrill going on. <laughs> than, uh... <laughs> yes, but you are a survivor. Oh, yeah, very anyway. Nice. Um, but there, but I had to like, get a song in there somewhere. So the uh, Rocky, uh, like I said, sequelize it, make another Rocky movie, make a reboot or destroy it. And there is a, not necessarily a, a Rocky reboot, but there's word on the street that they are possibly doing like an Apollo movie where they'll be following like Apollo's son who will be coming like a like a Rocky type figure, which I know is not necessarily a reboot, more of a spinoff. But uh, th- that was kind of my thought process. So I'm curious to hear what you have say about that chuck since i know you love that franchise so much yeah i don't know i think it's too soon to kind of do a sequel or a reboot or anything because the rocky balboa movie you know just came out a few years ago let's be honest there's been six of them and i think i would be happy if they just ended it where it's at you know like especially with anything focused on 
actual like Rocky Balboa because Stallone's just let's face it out of his prime at this point. Unless you, you Say know, it ain't this, so Chuck. Say it ain't so. Unless there's like an <laughs> underground fighting ring in a retirement home, and, you know, <laughs> and he somehow gets involved in that. But I do like the idea you're talking about, like a spinoff with a different character. That I think would be really cool. But as far as anything actually based on Balboa's career or life or anything. I think we should just kind of leave that where it's at, kind of destroy that. But the spinoff idea is pretty cool, though. I would I would definitely be intrigued by that. Uh, Greg, what do you think? I'm going to make this short and sweet. I think I could uh, wrap it up with four words. I agree with Chuck. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That works, that works. Uh, making the podcast shorter for you listeners <laughs> and for me to edit yes uh, <laughs> moving on to another franchise not necessarily franchise but i guess you would say franchise this franchise was a huge part of my childhood as a kid I haven't watched it in a very long time and there was actually eight movies in this franchise eight movies maybe even nine and even a saturday morning cartoon show so many memorable characters from this classic franchise of Police Academy. You had Michael Wilson doing the sound effects. You had McNulty and all that great stuff. And have you guys watched at all Police Academy going up? Or am I the only crazy person? Hell yes. No, I've seen it. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny stuff. <laughs> so should we maybe make a sequel? You know, Steven Gutenberg is not doing anything these days. I'm sure he could, <laughs> He's sure doing he could... Dancing with the Stars, Dan. Come on. Um, it's not Christmas time. He's not making any Christmas movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or should we reboot it with an entire new cast? Or should we just leave it be and not do anything? We started with Chuck last time, Greg. So why don't we start with you? What do you think? If we could do... we If we have a character that can do awesome noises... I think it's time for a reboot. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's been quite a few years since we we've actually seen any of those types of movies. And I I think you could get like a couple of characters to kind of come back. I think Bobcat would be awesome to see in there. Um, you could even direct it. So yeah, he could. Yeah, uh, that one movie. Uh, what was it? Made in America or something? God bless America. Oh, God bless America. Yeah, I thought that one was really awesome but uh yeah if they if they have like some of the older characters come back for like little uh cameo spots or uh kind of have like steve gutenberg back as like the uh the chief of police that that'd be pretty cool i think chuck what do you think i agree with greg <laughs> 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 no i uh I definitely think a reboot would be cool if, like Greg said, especially if they got a guy that could do sound effects. Uh, maybe get some of today's funny people on there too. Like I know Louis C.K. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's not really sound effects, but maybe some of like Frank Caliendo. <laughs> he could do a lot of impressions and stuff. Um, but I don't know John if that Madden's would work. John arresting me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would pay money to see that. Let's face it. Um, I paid money to see a skit of John Madden playing a cop. That would be. <laughs> he just goes to Brett Favre's house. You're arrested. <laughs> well, wow, we boom. Where'd that gun come from? <laughs> <laughs> um, he just the only guy he doesn't arrest is Brett Favre. <laughs> <laughs> he just and that's how he get he gets confessions out of people. He just talks to them about Brett Favre for like 15 minutes until they finally give up. It's like all right, I can't handle any more Brett Favre talk. <laughs> I don't know if that was my best Madden, by the way, because sometimes I have to ease into it. But um, it's good. It was good. But anyway, I, no, I think a reboot would be pretty cool. I think that would be actually pretty funny in in today's uh, light and you know some modern comedy. Yeah, I, I could see a reboot, possibly be even a sequel, like maybe a, a com combination of both. With like you said, Greg and Chuck, with new characters and just with cameos from the classic ones. So yeah, definitely. Why, why not? Why not? Uh, unfortunately, some of them have passed away because the guy who played Hightower, is, Bubba Smith, is is gone. But I'm sure you can get like Shaquille O'Neal to play, play that role or something like that. Uh, <laughs> we know how much a great of an actor Shaq is. So Charles Barkley would be terrible, <laughs> just terrible. <laughs> Let's move on to another classic franchise, uh, one that again we talked about Turtles last week and how much that took over. This is another one that took over when we were kids, and that was of course. The Power Rangers. 
Go, was... go, Power Rangers! There Sorry. you go. I was waiting. Like... <laughs> um, I'm getting predictable. I, you, a... You're going to put the this is Dave, Jason David Frank at the beginning of this one, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Because <laughs> I'm unemployed. <laughs> Sorry, wow. that's, that's actually really mean. I like Dave, I like Jason David Frank, actually. That's that came out pretty mean, but it's okay. Editing power. Okay. Um, <laughs> thought that was pretty funny. Anyways, so the Power Rangers. Should we make a sequel of it? Maybe, which you might think is kind of crazy, but we know Jason David Frank is very they much into. Would never do that, Dan. They would never make a sequel. <laughs> never. Reboot's impossible with Power Rangers. They <laughs> exactly. don't do that. No, they've only no. done it twenty times. So. <laughs> But I'm thinking like a sequel. Imagine with some of the characters who are older, they're doing like this MMMPR, like a fan. I thought you were going to say MMA. <laughs> <laughs> what, well, some of them. Some of them are doing MMA. Uh, but like where they're like older and like more, it's more like adult version of the Power Rangers. So we could maybe do a sequel like that where you so have. The, the, the Power Rangers are going to be more an adult version yeah, well, it's not it's not an official. Well, version. with the Pink Ranger, I I would like to see a more adult <laughs> version with the Pink Ranger. To be quite honest, isn't Kimberly on some TV show now, like a cop show or something? No, she was just on Cops. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think she was Chuck. That yeah, Chuck. I don't even know the name of it, but um, I don't either. But so it must be an awesome show. Anyways, we're <laughs> getting off the rails here. So, would you want to see a sequel, a reboot, or should we just finally destroy Power Rangers after all these years? Uh, Greg, what do you think? I'd like to see some of the, the, the older cast come back. I'd like to see, like, Kimberly and, and Jason and, yeah, the green, white, red, blue, the original ones from uh, back in the day come back and kind of reprise their role. And Alpha! <laughs> <laughs> Zordon! <laughs> Impressions are spot on tonight, Chuck. <laughs> Coming out of yeah. the shell here tonight. <laughs> so I, I'd, I'd like, them to see come, uh, like to see him come back. I'm not sure what uh, option that kind of falls into. But yeah, I, I'd like sequel. to see it come back. So, so that Greg, would be sequel? That would be sequel, Greg. That goes sequel. So, Chuck, do you agree with Greg? <laughs> yeah, I think ultimately. I mean... Part of me wants to just say, like, you know, friggin' let Lord Zed just win and destroy that whole universe. But <laughs> I think it would be kind of cool to have some of the the original Power Rangers come back. And I think with, like, some actual good modern-day animation and uh, a little bit of Hollywood magic kind of make it look less corny. But I, I think it would be pretty cool. Come on, nice. I like the episode with the pig that ate everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Some of those, like... It's like friggin' mirror image of uh, the Godzilla movies, just like you know, <laughs> falling over into a plastic building and stuff. <laughs> yeah, they did. It. They destroyed a lot of cities in that show. It's like yeah, they were not. Right. And then the next episode, it's like magically rebuilt. Yeah, <laughs> they're very good at rebuilding. I guess we just billions said. and billions of dollars of debt. <laughs> did you notice that they always fought the battles in this big open space just outside of town? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, he just grew up really big. Wait, come on, let's go over here and fight. Like, let's step outside. I, I, I think the the Power Rangers actually took place in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> and they never bothered to fix it. <laughs> but yeah, Bulk and Skull and uh, all that stuff. Remember Ernie from the Juice Bar? <laughs> I think Ernie's dead at this point. At that, I don't know. But uh, I thought right. I saw that somewhere. I think we'll probably make this one the last one for the night. And this one, I know it's a movie franchise that we all really like. Uh, and I think we all have our favorites from from this. There's been three films so far in, in this trilogy. And one done by the infamous Gizmo del Toro. And that is Blade. I know, Chuck, you're a huge fan of the Blade franchise. I think we all are big fans of it. So should we see a sequel of it? Wesley Snipes finally out of jail. So we can make, maybe sequelize this. Do a reboot. Maybe we just need to bring this into the Marvel fold with new characters and a new actor. Or leave it be. Are we kind of done with Blade at this point? Chuck. Let it be. Let it be. <laughs> Chuck, we'll start with you since I know how much you love this franchise. So what do you think? I, I think I'm going to I'm gonna have to say sequel uh, with, with Wesley Snipes 
you know, like you said, he's out of jail now for making that Gallo Walkers movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love him as Blade. Like, he is perfect. I really can't see anyone else in that role. I, I remember watching the TV series with, uh, uh, was it Kurt uh, Sticky Fingers Jones? Oh, and God. <laughs> even saying that makes me laugh. But anyway. <laughs> If, like if all rap names sticky sticky fingers, it's like that's the name you go with. It's like, sticky fingers, Dan. Sticky fingers. fingers. Yeah, with the A Z on the end. But I didn't like him in, in the role at all. I mean, he wasn't terrible, but he wasn't that great either. But yeah, Wesley Snipes is great. Like he really gets into character. Like I know people have say said that worked on those movies. Like he gets like freakishly into that character and like really gets lost in that when he's doing that role and stuff, which really shows on screen. But um, I think if they did something, you know, kind of bring it back into Marvel Studios and uh, let them handle it, and maybe you know do something with Morbius or something like that. I mean, there's always some cool stuff he could do there. So I would definitely go see it. Greg, what are your thoughts? Four words, Dan. I agree <laughs> with Chuck. Um, <laughs> I never really watched the the TV, so I don't know any uh, anything about that. But uh, yeah, I agree with Chuck. All right. we'll, we'll give it to Chuck this we'll time. Chuck. He wins this round, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you win this time, Gadget. So that was the first round, or the first example of. Sequel, reboot, or destroy. If there are franchises you'd like us to talk about, definitely let us know. There are millions of ways to get in contact with us when we'll get, go over that before the show ends. But we'd like to end each show with a special letter. And this week, actually, Chuck is doing his very first letter. And Chuck, what do you uh, tell them what it's about? By the way, I finally kind of got off my lazy butt and did one of these. I know we're on our eighth episode. and Finally, Chuck. Finally. People are probably like, you know, where's Chuck's letter? You know, everybody else is doing one. <laughs> people were clamoring for it. I uh, I gave in to peer pressure a little bit to say <laughs> to write one. <laughs> this is to ESPN, which I frequently watch, especially every morning when I'm eating breakfast and stuff. And I did that bad. I'm sorry. I'll just cut that out. There you go. Better? Better, Greg. Maybe you are the Michael Wilson we've all been looking for. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but yeah, I I do watch it quite a bit, and I'm a pretty big sports fan, like I mentioned on the first episode or whatever. But um, so yeah, I guess uh, we'll get into this letter here. It's kind of a negative letter, a couple of complaints, but uh, here goes. Dear ESPN, I am writing to address some recent issues I have noticed with your extensive coverage of the sports world. Before I get into the complaints that I have, I would like to mention that I do frequently watch your network, and I am generally pleased with the various programming you provide to hardcore sports fans. I particularly enjoy your NFL coverage and your This Is Sports Center commercials. However, recent events in the sports universe have garnered some extra attention from your network. And by extra, I mean around the clock, non freaking stop coverage <laughs> of mind numbingly extraneous topics. <laughs> Some examples of these events include primarily the Richie Incognito and Jonathan Martin debacle, Michael Sam being the first openly gay football player, and LeBron James' broken nose. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, these are all news headlines. But in my humble opinion, the news is to be given and then you move on to the next story. Your network doesn't appear to acknowledge that fine line between reporting relevant news and being that creepy guy at Walmart that tells you way too much information about his bowel movement schedule. Oh, you know Jimmy, too. <laughs> I guess he goes to Baltimore. But... He's got a car. For one thing, your reporting on the Jonathan Martin ordeal is out of hand. You have given detailed and inappropriate commentary on information that was incorrect and have given far too many tidbits of irrelevant information. As long as you're first, I suppose. Secondly, if you want openly gay sports players and African-American head coaches and things like that to be accepted as commonplace, why would you make such a big deal of these occurrences and run the stories nonstop for like four or five days? And lastly, LeBron James has a broken nose. Okay, you told us once, and he needs to wear a mask. Guess what? It's happened to many players in the past, and it will happen to many in the future. We don't need an update on LeBron's life every time he rips a South Florida fart. <laughs> 
and we especially don't need ridiculous segments about his scoring statistics when wearing a mask versus not wearing a mask. <laughs> He's Batman. That's true, actually. They did do that. <laughs> I haven't been watching ESPN either. He averages like three more points per game without the mask. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> I think that would improve his statistics. <laughs> but it is going way too far. So that's it. Hopefully those examples got my point across. When reporting news in the sports world, just tell us what we need to know and get on with it. I'm sure there are plenty of heartwarming, feel-good stories out there that are being overlooked because LeBron just got a paper cut from his $700 billion check. (laughs) Best of luck in your future sports reporting. Oh, and cut down on the NFL analysts, will you? You have about 40 of them, and you add a new one every week to talk about Peyton Manning's favorite sandwiches. (laughs) (laughs) Sincerely, Chuck. Very nice, very nice, and very true. I cannot agree more. It's so hard to... Take that network seriously anymore. And if you'd like to uh, comment on our episode, if you want to write a letter as well, because we've had some people in the past write a letter to us, you can send us an email. You can email us at geekcastradio, feedback at geekcastradio.com. Just include in the subject line, talking in circles. Or you can email us at talkingincircles at live.com. We're on Facebook. If you search talking in circles, GCRN. Also on Twitter in talking in circles at talking in circles. And that's T-L-A-N-K, the letter N, and then in circles. It had to be adjusted because of the craziness of Twitter. You can also comment on the Geekcast Radio post at geekcastradio.com. We love getting those comments, that feedback. It's, it's really awesome to see. And if you have time, leave us a review on iTunes because that's huge. It definitely gets our podcast out there. Let us know, you know what you guys like and, you know, five stars is always appreciated. But uh, anything from you guys before we bring this episode to its conclusion. That's about all I got to ramble on about. So Greg, anything else from you before we bring this episode to a close? Nope, I'm good. We'd like to thank you all for joining us for this week, but for now This has been Chuck This has been Greg, or John Madden! Boom! And this has been Dan, and we've been Talking in Circles. We will see you next week. Is that Muppet Babies or the Muppet Show? Uh, no, I I actually forget the Muppet Babies theme song. Is that Muppet Babies? Boo 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 boo. Well, I mean, you know what they need is like a Brett Favre Muppet, you know, just back there throwing a football around. You know what I mean? It's just so cute. He's got a massive beard. We have <laughs> dueling mountain, like dueling uh, Madden's right now. <laughs> <laughs> Worst podcast ever. Have it's you seen the going back and forth with Madden voices? <laughs> <laughs>
Anyways, I'll cut that out because I <laughs> fucked it up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <all right. laughs> After credit scene, check. Uh,